Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me in Sports Talk. We got a lot to talk about, man. It's, 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 it's almost too much going on right now. Uh, NFL, uh, that's pretty much where it's at right now. I mean, you wake up this morning and basically you're going to find out that Antonio Brown has been cut by the Raiders. I guess everybody knows that. Everything that goes on with Antonio Brown, it's like he went from having like frostbite to his feet, getting into it with players, to having uh, different things to say about Ben Roethlisberger, his former quarterback at uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, to uh, having issues with his new team, the Oakland Raiders, with his helmet. I mean... It, it, it's almost like when is it going to stop with Antonio Brown? And then <clears throat> come to find out he even gets into it with his own general manager of the Oakland Raiders. And then all of a sudden you find out this morning, you wake up, you're sitting there watching TV and you find out that Antonio Brown has been cut. And then the next thing you know, you find out that not even long after that, which I called it, I said it. The Patriots were going to go after Antonio Brown, man. I knew this was going to happen, bro. I had this. Come on. Not to say that Randy Moss was a, a diva wide receiver, which Randy Moss was a – he was a wide receiver that liked to have the ball in his hands, just like a lot of wide receivers, like T.O., just like that. But Antonio Brown is worse than all of these players. He, he is by far the worst of all of these players as far as being called that diva wide receiver. I mean, if you look at it, I'm not even surprised that the Patriots wanted to acquire him just like they did Randy Moss. Hopefully they can get something out of him. If they do, let's just say that they do. Like I said in one of my previous podcasts, because I like to predict what some teams are going to do. I'm new at this. This is This is totally new. But I can tell you right now, like I said in one of my previous podcasts, I feel like Tom Brady is going to come to a regression this year. A lot of guys don't want to hear that. A lot of fans don't want to hear that. But I honestly believe that the Patriots are tripping. I honestly believe that Tom Brady is going to regress this year. I think it's going to happen. I think he's like, what, 42? He turned 42. And I'm telling you, just like Peyton Manning had in his – Last year's with the Broncos, he went out winning the Super Bowl. I feel like Tom Brady should have went out last year winning the Super Bowl. Because I'm telling you, watch. Age is going to catch up with you. I mean, we'll see what happens or whatever. But right now, as, as far as we know it, Antonio Brown is signed with the Patriots. And we'll see what happens. Right now, he's not supposed to play week one. That's all the information I have on that as far as it goes with the Pats, but he's not supposed to play week one. Of course not. He doesn't know anything, so how could he play? But, uh, yeah, but it's shocking. I mean, this dude, it, it's too much going on with him. I mean, you getting into it with everybody around the league. You went on LeBron James' barbershop show saying this and saying that. The whole summer has been about Antonio Brown. It's, I mean, it's been a – it's been something of a mystery to me. Because you look at a guy and you go from having frostbite and then all of a sudden you go from getting into it with prior teammates. They're really It doesn't matter what happens with your previous team. It does not matter. But you're still getting into it with people in the media, folks that you don't even know, you're on Twitter, you're saying this, you're saying that. But basically... This guy needs to just shut up and play football. I mean, can he can the guy just shut up and play football? That's all I want to know. Somebody asked me this morning, they was like, hey, maybe the Titans will acquire him. I'm like, I'm like, man, really, I mean, I really don't think the Titans should get someone like him because of his attitude. If he doesn't get the ball, it's gonna be a problem. I mean, he's been a cancer. I mean, he came from, like, I was reminded today, I thought he came from Cincinnati in college, but actually he came from Central Michigan. And that's cool. You came from the bottom to the top. 
and you're doing your thing. I mean, but now it's like, man, now you with the past, you just need to shut up and play football. Just shut up and play football, man. All that talk, everything you're saying, it doesn't really matter. At this point, you just need to shut up and play football. You went to the Raiders, you had the fans, everybody hyped, the coach, Gruden is hype about you coming, and now you don't even, you're not even on the team anymore. You were a whole different team. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I don't want to hear anything else about Antonio Brown as far as it goes with this. You know what? I'll tune in to find out because it's good talk. It's good to talk, actually talk about it and actually hear what's going on with Antonio Brown. But really, I think I've had it up to here, you know, with what's going on with him and everything he talks about, you know, when he had the blonde mustache and all of that. I think, I think I've had enough of Antonio Brown for now to say that I'm cool if you just shut up and play football. So I'd like to move on and talk about the NFL because there's a lot of games. Man, there's so many games going on in the NFL. Week one, um, there's one game in particular I definitely want to talk about, and that is the Titans and the Cleveland Browns because the Cleveland Browns have what I feel like is a playoff roster. Of course, you know, the Titans have been to the playoffs um, a couple of times in the last couple of years, uh, which is last season, not the past previous season, but the season before that, which uh, Mariota had that successful season in one of his many seasons that he actually needs to have a successful season. I mean, that's real talk. Titans need Mariota to step up. What else can you actually say about Mariota? He's been injury prone. Last season, he was sat out the last game of the season, which for me, honestly, I was actually, I was upset because he was, he sat out the last game. It's like, dang, you need your starting quarterback to start and you need him to get you to the playoffs, but he could not start. And that, I'm sure it's a lot of fans, man, out there that were, that were pretty, pretty upset about it. But Cleveland Browns though, Baker Mayfield is the quarterback of Cleveland. Man, you got so many wide receivers. It's it's ridiculous. I don't know if y'all play fantasy football, but I've got Odell Beckham on one of my teams. Um, you got Jarvis Landry. You got, I mean, you've got everything. You've got, dude, you got running backs. They even bought in the guy from Kansas City. Can't remember his name right now. But you got wide receivers. You got defensive players. Cleveland has everything on their roster, offensively and defensively. If you really want to, if you really want to win in the NFL, they have everything on their roster that you need to win. Titans need to just show that they can actually put it together. You let uh, Taylor go uh, to the Cleveland. You let Taylor. Go. I still don't understand why you let. He was a. I feel like to me, look, I don't know much about him. I just watch him sometimes, but. He was a good wide receiver. Was he not a good wide receiver for the Titans? Fast, physical wide receiver, but you let him go. And from what I've heard, he's actually gone to Cleveland. He's actually been running his mouth, telling Cleveland players, coaches, what the Titans are doing. So you already know coaches right now for the, for the, for the Titans are like, okay, this guy's already ran his mouth. It's already over the news. So the Titans got to go in. They got to change, obviously, some of the plays that they're going to run. Vrabel was probably pissed. He was probably pissed just to hear that they were going to let him go. I don't, You know what? I don't even know. I'm not an insider for the Titans, but I just know that was a bad move. I mean, you got Corey Davis. You got Brown. You got the guy you bought in from Tampa Bay, which I really like that receiver. But just hopefully nobody gets hurt because he could have been a good backup. For all of these guys, Sharp. I mean, I mean, you, man, you could have. He should have been one of the wide receivers that made the fifty-three man roster for the Titans. And now you got to face Week One, a Browns team that is definitely going to be hot. Supposedly from the talk, and you know what? We don't even know. It could be just all talk. We don't know really what the Browns are going to do. We have no idea. But we're going to see. That's one. Of, that's one of my big games. You know, Tennessee Titans is. That's my team. One of my homies, Cleveland Browns, that's his team. But, man, this is going to be a good game. I mean, I can't wait to see it. It's a lot of games. A lot of games going to be going on, though. You got Miami and Dallas. Um, 
Hold up. No, that's 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 not even right. You got New York Giants in Dallas. I'm skipping ahead. But this game right here is going to be important because this is a this is a divisional game for the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys have to win this game if they want to go up in the division. New York Giants, they drafted Daniel Jones out of Duke to be obviously success to Manning, Eli for the Giants. Because everybody knows that right now, Eli is not a good player. It's been like two or three years, and Eli has not done anything for the New York Giants. I don't even know why he's not been replaced yet. I have no idea. I have no clue. But you now have a quarterback that everybody's saying in camp, he's been very successful at relating to the wide right receivers, getting the plays out, throwing the ball. And in the preseason games, he's been very successful at getting the balls to the wide right receiver and leading the team up the field. So – it's just, a, it's, just, it's just a matter of time. The writing's on the wall, as far as I'm concerned, with uh, Eli Manning. It's pretty much over. It's been a good career. You got two rings, and, I mean, that's good for what you did for your career. But for the last couple of years, man, I got to be honest, man, you sucked. Real talk, man. It's time for Eli Manning to go ahead and hang it up. Pass the torch on over, man. You, Bruh. You already know, man. New York is a beast. That's a beast town right there. New York fans, Boston fans, all those fans up there, man. It's, man, those fans are a beast. I mean, they really get into you. If you have a problem, if you have thin skin and you live up there in New York City, Boston, in the northern area up there, you shouldn't even be up there. Because they'll get, they'll get you. They'll talk about you. They'll... They'll dissect you. I mean, you can be in the South and they dissect you, but when you're in the North and they, they dissect you as a player, you're ready to go. I mean, you're pretty much ready to leave. But anyway, um, so the Dallas Cowboys, you know, the first game of the season they played New York Giants. Um, as everybody knows, uh, Dak Prescott has not signed a contract yet, the quarterback. Um, Amari Cooper. He hasn't signed a contract yet. He hasn't got his contract yet. This is gonna be this is gonna be a long show, man. I'm just I'm just you know I got to get it in on this show because man, it's, it's a lot to talk about. Sometimes I gotta take my time on these shows. It's a lot of NFL fans, a lot of you know, a lot of college football fans. I'm gonna get into college football. I promise you, I'm getting into that a little bit later. But right now, I got to talk about these Cowboys and what's going on. Um, Amari Cooper has not yet signed a contract yet. And uh, but however, it's a lot of Dallas Cowboy fans that are excited because Zeke just signed the contract. He signed a six year, $90 million contract. He was in Cabo training. Everybody knows Zeke was in Cabo. He was training uh, over the summer. He was not going to come to camp. It is what it is, man. That guy was not going to show up. You already know he was not going to show up. He wanted a new contract. Why? Because running backs in the NFL do not last long. They do not last long. It is what it is. I don't blame him. He was the leading rusher, uh, what, for the past two or three seasons? Zeke was good. The only thing about Zeke is he gets into a lot of trouble outside of football, and that's the thing that you don't like about Zeke. And you hope that he stays out of trouble you know, when he's off the field, it is what it is, man. That's Zeke, man. It's, he got in trouble in Vegas. He got in trouble in Dallas. He gets in trouble almost everywhere he goes. It's like, dude, can you just play football? Just like you want your football players to do, man. You just want them to line up and play football. Lyle Collins, former lineman at LSU. He just signed a 50 Million dollar contract for the Dallas Cowboys, thirty-five million dollars guaranteed. Right tackle, you know, Dallas Cowboys solidified their whole offensive line, so these guys are going to be here for a while. Tyrone Smith, left tackle. I'm not even going to name all the tackles because if, if I name all the tackles, man, Dallas Cowboy fans will be tuned in so quick. But they signed all their tackles, all their guards, their center. Everybody, everybody is signed on Dallas Cowboys. 
on that offensive line. They're basically putting together a core group that they can have for years to come so they can grow together, so they can win a Super Bowl. That's all that Jerry Jones wants. He just wants the team to grow together. He wants them to win a Super Bowl and, and have chemistry amongst each other so they can go ahead and do that. Why? Because Jerry Jones is getting old. When's the last time you saw Jerry Jones give somebody a big contract? It's been a while, right? So he's doing this because he knows he's getting old. He's got to probably pass the team over to his son before he goes to his grave. He wants to see the team win a Super Bowl. I don't blame him. It is what it is. That's the Dallas Cowboys. But you, you got a lot of big games. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Patriots play uh, Pittsburgh Steelers this weekend. It's going to be a big game, man. Like I said, talking about Antonio Brown earlier, talking about Big Ben. But Big Ben has actually a lot to prove because he's not retired yet. He's getting up in age. He's got some players, Juju Smith. I got him on my fantasy squad. But I feel like, man, the Pittsburgh Steelers really have something to prove after they let go of Le'Veon Bell, which I have a problem with that. He was one of your premier players. You could have just gave the guy a contract. And you know what? You offered him a contract. And you know what? It was more than what he signed for with the Jets. And that's the funny thing about it. But you know what? I think that he just wanted to get away from the team. He was tired of being franchise tagged. And he wanted to just move on. I mean, that's how I feel about it. Um, and he did. He's with the Jets right now. At my cousin, you know, he felt like Antonio Brown was going to actually come with the Jets just to team back up with Le'Veon Bell. And that would be a good tandem. Uh, with the with the quarterback, that would that would be a good squad. But like I said earlier, the pat the the Pats swooped in, they got them. So it is what it is. But anyway, that's going to be a good matchup uh, this weekend uh, between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New England Patriots. Um, I got to get paid, just like everybody else. But not this weekend on this podcast. This is something I'm trying to grow into. So I got to advertise from a big homie. Make sure you join my guy on Instagram at DJ Kool Aid Old School Sundays from eight to ten p.m. Eastern Standard Time. He also has a Quiet Storm ten to midnight on Sunday night. Also, that's Big Bruce Radio. I don't know if you guys you guys know Big Bruce Bruce. You know, yeah, man, he has he has a radio broadcast that is live man he's straight also join my big homie on mondays 8 to 10 p.m edm that's called electronic dance music you know what it is man, man y'all know what electronic dance music don't y'all, don't look at the screen like you don't know what edm is yeah man y'all know what it is that boom, boom. i ain't even gonna get it man, y'all know about that man anyway besides that let me talk about my homegirl, Melissa C. Welsh. Mellow's Custom Bono. Check her out on Facebook. She can do, like, shirts. Um, she's really good at doing shirts, customizing clothing, anything you want, man. Check her out. She's on Facebook. That's Mellow's Custom Vinyl. She did a shirt for me. And actually, I'm going to put it on. The next show I do, I'm going to put it on there so you guys can see uh, what that shirt looks like and everything. So it's tight, but... Last but not least, man, I got to get into uh, college football. Like I said, I was going to. Like I said, this is one of my this is one of my longer shows. You know, some of these shows you like, some you don't. You don't have to tune in. You can do whatever you want. Doesn't matter to me. It's my show. I like it. It's gonna be a lot more than I do to this show. But if you're watching, thank you for joining me. Uh, when I get it on YouTube, you guys can subscribe to me. Like me on Facebook. If I get it on Instagram, um, right now on Instagram, I am W Allen underscore for prayers. And I put that for prayers on there because basically uh, I don't really like the current, you know, I don't want to get into politics right now, but, you know, if I could be president right now, I would be president, mainly because I don't like the health care plans that are going on right now. I totally disagree with some of the stuff that goes on. Uh, in the White House, in D.C., or whatever. But anyway, this is a sports talk show. Last thing I'm going to get into is 
college football, a lot of teams that lost last week, like Missouri, South Carolina, those are the two biggest teams that lost last week, along with Tennessee. Um, they're actually avenging their losses from last week. So the team that's last to actually show up on this whole schedule, which they actually have started right now, and I'm sitting here doing the talk show because this is what I love to do. And as soon as I turn this TV on, they're going to be on this TV right here. I'm upstairs chilling at the house. But the Tennessee Volunteers have, have a lot of work to do. Um, Jeremy Pruitt, uh, he's supposed to get his team motivated to play. I feel like week one against Georgia State, he did not get his team motivated to play. That is his job. I understand you got players on the team like Jawan Jennings spoke up this week and said he wanted to be, you know, leader on the team. I obviously feel like, personally, that Jared Garantana should be the main leader on this team. He's a veteran. He's a quarterback. He's supposed to lead the team up and down the field. I don't care if you're sitting on the sidelines or whatever, get your players. Just get them, get them into the game, get them focused, get them knowing what's supposed to be going on, have them – immersed into it have them just ready to play have whoever players out there make sure they're just learning from everything that's going on in the field especially in the first game i looked at his body language he had no good body language like whatsoever in that game i was actually upset to see my team play like that it made no sense i've never i've never actually watched a tennessee game and seen them actually perform the way they did it 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 made no sense to me the way that game went down with Georgia State. You had no sense of urgency from the offensive or defensive side of the ball. Coaches looked like they weren't ready. You got coaches in the booth that looked like they needed to be on the field to communicate with the players so the players know what to do. You got basically a freshman running back playing in this whole second half because Chandler fumbled twice. The, the 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 very the second play is in the first or second play of the game. Garantano throws a hot play, hot pass to Chandler, which gets fumbled and gets intercepted by Georgia State. I mean that 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 changes the tone of the whole game. Tennessee so showed, showed no resiliency, in my opinion, to come back in this game. You show nothing on both lines of scrimmage, offensively or defensively. Quarterback showed nothing. Wide receivers did show promise. Defense showed absolutely nothing. So, everybody knows Tennessee is my team. I mean, it, it, it is what it is. It, it's, it's, it was really sad for me to sit there. I heard Fred White talk about it. I heard Jason Swain talk about it. Uh, Ball for Life. Uh, Daryl Hardy. Uh, he sat there. We sat there and talked about it after the game for about 25, 30 minutes. We just sat up there and talked about it. You know, he lives here in Dallas, and, you know, I, I run into him, you know, with my job, and we sat there and talked about it. That was the worst game I've ever seen Tennessee Vols play. And if that's what Pruitt has to offer – if he can't get his players motivated, you can't get these guys up here on this screen. If I sit on my couch and you can't get these guys motivated to play, if I sit up here on this screen and watch, you need to go home. You know, if you're, you know, he was a good defensive quarterback, good defensive coordinator for the Alabama Security Crimson Tide. But if you're not a really good head coach and you know you're not a good head coach, if you're about to lose that locker room, if the coaches are losing the locker room and the players don't even want to play for you anymore, nah, nah, you need to get out of there. I mean, I hate to say it, but the guy from Washington State, Mike Leach, he actually wanted to come to Tennessee. I hate to, I don't want to, you know, I only want to bring stuff up like this because I don't like to. I don't know folks going to look at it. Folks is already looking at the BYU game right now. It's on TV. I just haven't turned it on yet. Hopefully, this game is going to be. Uh, a turnaround for Tennessee. I don't know what's going to happen. I just hope it's something good. Now I don't. I, now I know folks. You know, folks probably tuned out as soon as I talked about Tennessee. It is what it is, man. But I'm just saying.
anyway, man, I'm I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna get off here, man. I, you know, this was a really chill uh, show, laid back, lean back, Fat Joe. You know, it is what it is, man. I'm. This is sports talk, man. I. I love talking about sports and whatnot, but I'm going to sit back and watch the rest of these games. It's a great game coming on tonight. Um, I don't really know what happened between like Clemson and uh, Texas A&M, but from what I saw, it looked like Clemson was taking care of business. Now, whether or not it went down or unfolded like that, I'm not sure. But my wife's alma mater, uh, Texas Longhorns, you know, they play tonight. LSU. If I'm not mistaken, I think they play in Austin tonight. It's supposed to be a big game. I wish my wife would give me some tickets to the game. I mentioned it. My wife don't holler out. She said, uh, it's football season. That means you're going to stay upstairs. You ain't never going to come downstairs. I was like, oh, baby, nah. But I was steady thinking to myself, man, you know, I'm going to be upstairs, man. It's college football season, dude. I'm, I'm locked in, man. I'm locked in, man. But anyway, man, thank you for joining me, man. This is Sports Talk. Uh, there's going to be a lot to talk about this season, man. It's going to be so chill. Today was a chill show. I'm not going to get too excited. I got to sit back and watch all the games. I got to enjoy college football. Watch Tennessee Volunteers, see what they do. <sighs> SEC, who do I think is going to win? Who do I think is going to lose? Out of the West, I think Alabama's probably going to get it, man. Again. But if I had to choose a second team, I'm going to say Texas A&M. I am, man. I think Texas A&M is a good team. Now, whether or not they win or lose today, I feel like down the road, man, they're going to be a good squad. And LSU may have something to say about that. LSU dad, I know you know. Um, Uncle Lou, you know, Uncle Lou has a lot to say, man. Uncle Lou be clowning the Tennessee Volunteers, man. I don't know if y'all know about Uncle Lou, but he's on YouTube, man. He got a lot to say, man. He had a, he had a, uh, I'm like, you know what, Uncle Lou, I ain't going to get into you like that, man. It's my balls, dog, but it is what it is. George is going to come out the East, though. Unless Florida has something to say about it. I thought Mizzou was going to be the one, but you never know. Mizzou had a good game today, so you never know what's going to happen in the East, though. This is a chill show, man. This is Sports Talk. William Allen, I'm your host. Thank you for joining me. I'm just going to be in and out the season, man. I don't have a set time or anything like that. This is just something that I love to do. I'm chilling, relaxing, just loving sports. This is what I do. Thank you for joining Sports Talk, and we'll catch up with you when we do. All right.